everyone, it's Melissa Phillips, and I'm here today to show you a few handmade embellishments using just a few paper tray ink supplies. All you'll need for our handmade bows are, um, will be the double-ended banner die and some felt the color of your choice. I used melonberry, and you'll also need buttons. I used uh, vintage cream and classic craft, and then some button twine. And then, if you want to transfer your idea, um, to paper, I combined patterns here using paper tray inks, Melonberry Gingham and Melonberry Bitty Dot. Okay, we'll go ahead and start with this bow. So what you'll do is you'll run your Melonberry felt through your die cut machine with your double ended banner die and you'll end up with a long and a short piece. We'll go ahead and start with the shortest piece first. Just apply a little glue in the center and then fold those double ends towards the center. And I just like to make their tips line up for this particular bow. It turns out just the right size. Okay. Then that's going to be the underside of your bow. Then you're left with this long piece. And I just fold it in half and cut it in half. And then you've got two tails for your bow. And you can shorten them up or leave them just the length that they are. Apply more glue to the back side of your bow and then just adhere the tails. And it turns out like this. Then we just need to embellish the center. So I've gone ahead and I've threaded a classic craft button with button twine and then I'm going to center it and I do use adhesive because I'm, it just helps secure the button in place so it doesn't slide around while you're trying to tie it on the back. You could clip your button twine at this point but I've noticed that if you'll go ahead and wrap that button twine and tie it on the back it, it gives the bow some puffiness. It puckers it a little bit and kind of gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. And I like that. So just tug securely, tie that in a knot, and then trim your ends. And there you've got your very first bow. So cute. Okay, we'll go ahead and do our flattened bow. Next, and once again, run your felt through your die cut machine and you're left with a long and a short piece. We're going to go ahead and start with the shortest piece first once again. On this bow, I overlapped my ends just a bit so that I could, I could get the bow just the size that I wanted. And that required me overlapping my ends slightly, but the fun thing about these bows is you can make them any size that you want. Okay. Now, take your longest piece of felt, and what we're going to do here at this point is just measure it out, depending on how long you want those tails to be. So we need to cut our felt about right here. And then what I do is I use that little extra piece we just trimmed off, kind of use it as a guide so that I can trim this end up so that it will match the first. Okay. So, now let's just layer them together. The top layer to the bottom layer. And then this this final step is just wrapping this little extra piece that we have around the center. So apply a little glue here on the top side. Hopefully that'll get that lined up right on the center mark that you need it to be without it sliding around. I've decided that the hardest part about this bow is keeping it centered and, and lined up. I have lots of crooked examples for you. Okay, wrap that little extra piece around to the back side 
and adhere with some glue. Pull as tight as you can to make it snug and secure. And looks like that's going to work just fine. Trim off any excess. I'm going to trim those little points just so it'll lay a little bit flatter for us. Okay, and there you've got your flattened felt bow. Okay, and our third bow is the simplest of all. All you need for this one is the longest portion, the longest length, double-ended banner die. Go ahead and tie that in a knot. And you could actually end right there if you wanted to. That would make a cute embellishment. But I went ahead and I um, attached a button to the center. And I did shorten the ends of this up a little bit. But you don't have to. That's the fun thing, like I said, is just customize it the length that you need it to be. So, one more button tied with button twine. And adhere it to the center of your knot. You could trim your button twine ends at that point, but I, I'm a tire. I like to tie and tie and secure on the back side. I can't wait to try these in different colors. I've only tried them in the melon berry, and I just think they're the cutest things. Okay, trim up your ends, and there you've got your third bow using felt. Then like I said, the fun part is go ahead and experimenting with paper. And you use the very same technique for for this bow, except I stack the buttons in the center just to add a little bit more dimension. To get the loops to plump up a little bit, I used the end of a paintbrush, a small paintbrush just kind of rolled it around in there and it gave it some dimension. And then here's an example of the flattened paper bow using the paper tray ink melon berry gingham with the bitty dot as the center wrap and then I just topped it with a vintage cream button and some button twine.